Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're going to learn about Django models and migrations, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students, and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. The source code for today's tutorial starts where the previous lesson ended, and there's a link in the description that provides the code for each lesson. I've got VS Code open. You can see I've got a Lesson 3 folder over here now, and let's go ahead and open a terminal window, and like we do at the beginning of every lesson, let's go ahead and start our virtual environment. So I'll type source, then .venv slash scripts. This would be a lowercase bin if you're on Mac or Linux, and after that I want activate. I'll press enter, and now you can see the .venv in parentheses. So let's go ahead and cd into my project. So now we're in the directory that we need to be in. I'm going to close the terminal for now. Let's open the my project directory here in the file tree. And then from there, let's open the post directory, and let's go to the models.py file. Now we can create models with our Python code. That they model data. And each type of data is going to have a table in the database. And what happens when we create the Python code, and their classes, by the way, the models, then they get migrated and become tables in the database. So the migration takes our Python code and turns it into a database table. So for example, we might have users and we'll have posts. And so those would be two separate tables in our database. So we need to start out by creating our model in Python, and we're in the models.py file right now. Let's start on line four in our models.py file, and I'll type class, host, and then we pass in models.model with a capital M, that's important, and then a colon. After that, we start to define our model. And so here's what we want in our post model. We want a title field, we want a body field, and then let's have a slug field. Now a slug would be the defining part of the URL or the post. So we might have rdomain.com slash posts slash, and then you would see the slug. That is typically how we refer to that. So it's part of the URL and identifies the post or article, if you will. Then a date as to when it was created. Now we need to set all of these equal to something. So let's go ahead and set the title equal to models dot character field. And now this character field is going to accept a max underscore length. Let's set that equal to 75 characters. Now let's quickly look at the Django docs. In the Django docs, you can see that we've got a model field reference title here. So this page is going to show all the different field types that we can have. And as I scroll down, first it has field options here under the field reference that we see on the right. But then as I scroll down, we'll find the field types. And you can see that I use the character field. So let me click on that and we'll get the details. And here you can see the details of this character field and it accepts a max length. So anytime you need a field and you can explore this page, I'll link to it in the description, you can look up the different types available to you. And of course you can use that dot notation in VS Code to pull up the menu and look at any name that ends with the word field as well as it should be in this list. Okay, we're back in VS Code. Now let's set the body equal, not minus, but equal to models.text field and put parentheses, we won't pass anything in there. Now there is a difference between the character field and the text field, and you could look this up in the docs, but the text field is going to relate to a text area form input, which is different. And that's something else about the fields that we choose here. They relate to form inputs when we go ahead and look at these in our website. So that's important as well. We're not just defining our database, we're also thinking about how we're going to accept that data in a form. Now slug is going to equal models.slug field, and we won't pass anything into it either. But then date is going to equal models.datetime field, and here we do pass something in. I need auto underscore now underscore add equals true. And that means a timestamp is going to be added, or a date timestamp, every time the user adds another post. So all the user needs to provide is the title, body, and slug, and the database will automatically add the date timestamp to go along with that. So now we've completed our model. Let's save the file. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal window with control in the back tick. 
And from here, like we've done in previous lessons, let's start the server. So I'm going to type pi. If you're on Mac or Linux, you want to type Python, then manage.py, and then run server. And when I enter, we'll see that same error slash warning message that we've seen in previous lessons that says you have 18 unapplied migrations. And so that is because Django comes with some of its own built-in models as well. And we need to apply those migrations also. So let's do that first. I'll press Control C to get back out of the server. And now to go ahead and apply these migrations, we need to type pi, and I'm on the wrong keys again, pi, there we go, manage.py, and then migrate. And now let's press Enter. Once we do that, you can see it applied all of those migrations from the built-in models that Django provided. But this did not apply our post migration. We need to make that migration first before it can be applied. So let's once again type pi, then manage.py, and then we type make migrations, all one word, no space there, and press enter. And you'll see that it creates a migration for our post model that we created. And it tells us where this migration is, and we can look at that in just a moment but it's uh, posts slash migrations, and then it has a number, 001, because Django is going to keep track of these migrations. And then when we create another one, let's say we change something about our post model, we would need to make another migration at that point. When we do that, it's going to compare the migrations. It's going to know what it's already created in the database, and it's only going to take the actions that it needs to based on reconciling what has already happened with the changes we have made. So now that we've created this migration, we can also apply it. But before we apply it, let me close the terminal and let's look at it. We've got the migrations folder over here. Here is the migration file. And you can see inside the file, it wants to create this model, the database. So if we create a migration in the future, it's not going to create the model again. It will have already done so. But this first time, it needs to do that. And we can see the different fields that we added as well. So that's the migration. Let's go ahead now apply it to the database by sending that migrate command. So we'll say pi manage.py and then just type migrate, press enter. And now we get the messages back that it has applied the migrations. It says applying post.0001 underscore initial and okay. So now that is available in our database. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.